all right good afternoon one and all welcome to the video um so um first of all thank you so much we have reached 10000 subscribers so um thank you so much for all your love and support um so recently a lot of people wanted to learn async architecture right so that's why i started celery um python flask docker container you know making sure everything is um you know everything together so um uh, in my couple of last uh, three videos i have been talking about um you know celery async task and stuff like that so we use redis as a bro and the backend, right? So we use um, Redis. Now in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the same thing, the same architecture, but with uh, RabbitMQ as a messaging broker. So let's get started. So let's understand some basics. Huh? Um, I mean, for people who are watching it for the first time, you know, we have this clients as usual, you know, whatever process you wanna do, you make some calls here and then you return data. So this is a synchronous in nature. We want to break down into an async, right? So that's where RabbitMQ or messaging broker comes in or queues. So what we do is basically, um, you know, a client. So basically uh, we'll have a Docker container, of course, right? So what we'll do is basically clients makes a request, it pass some data. Right. What we do is basically it's gonna it's gonna basically um, uh, it's gonna be taken by the Flask app. Right uh, now, what Flask app will do is we have a RabbitMQ as a messaging system or a queue system, which is again in a Docker container. This is also in a Docker container. So uh, that's why I'm drawing a a box out of it. So what we do is basically we simply paste that message into a queue. Right. We get a task ID return that to the user now uh, behind the scenes the worker will keep pulling the queues uh, as and when it comes and once the data is ready it's going to put that in the queue one interesting thing about this is uh, now you would ask me Samuel, you know make sense all of this but when you put the data into the queue right the messaging queue how long does it stay there? So by default, um, Celery has a settings where it can, whenever you put any messages, it stays for 24 hours or one day in the queue. So after one day, that mess message in the queue, if you don't get the, if you don't, if you don't, what I'm saying is basically, if you do not get the message back, if, I mean, it's gonna expire, right? It, it, it's, so we have an expiration. All of that is really amazing how everything works. So what we are trying to do is a simple system, not for something, so we have a function, basically he adds a number right and returns that and basically i have a delay of like let's say five seconds so what i do is basically instead uh, when a user basically calls uh, an api we put that message on the queue we return him a task id now what he do does is basically the user has another api he makes a call with that task id to check if the data is ready so basically it will give you a give him the status and if the data is ready user can again call one more API endpoint with a task ID and he would get the results. And the result would be from the queue, okay? And uh, that data in the queue will expire after 24 hours or one day. So whatever you set the timeout, right? So let's um, see that um, all in action. I'm excited to show you, man. So that's the code. Uh, you know, all I've done is I've just changed from the last video. Uh, so let me walk you through everything. So we have two folder, Flask and Simple. So let's go to the Flask. In the Flask, we have an uh, we basically define our salary task. The broker is AMQ, that is a RabbitMQ, uh, username, password, and the port on which RabbitMQ works. The backend, you can choose a Redis backend or whatever you want, but I'm gonna choose RabbitMQ for this. So we have that, right? Now what we do is basically, whenever you make a request, right, uh, through this API endpoint, uh, let me open up the simple worker folder. I have a, I wanna actually split this into two screens so uh, I can explain you in a very nice way. So uh, I think I'll do split horizontally, I'll remove that. So check this out guys, so easy, so piece of cake. So you define an instance of a salary, okay? I did that. Now, in order to put the task in, in order to call the function, a background function, all you gotta do is call the instance of a class that you created, salary. I'm gonna zoom out, simple app. Dot send task is a keyword in salary that's basically used to send task, right? Then the name of the task that you have defined here in the queue. So in that task.py, we have the task. So task dot function name 
and the KWARC stands for arguments that you want to give. So whatever argument comes from request, you can you know simply push it on the um, push it as a args or KWARCs, however you like. Args is basically like tuples. KWARC is a dictionary. You know you know that it's very basic. So this is gonna simulate that, and it's gonna once the data is ready, it's gonna return that, put the data back onto the queue, and with the particular task ID, you can return that data. It's pretty amazing how everything works. Um, so that's that. So hope that makes sense. Now let us look at the compose file. So service, we are defining our service Flask app. So build everything in the Flask folder. We have a Docker file here, which basically runs the Flask app. It depends on Rabbit because uh, we are using a messaging queue. So it depends on RabbitMQ. Hostname, so now this is a RabbitMQ configuration. Image as RabbitMQ3 management because I want to see the dashboard. That's why I've used management image. Environment, uh, username and password that you want to set, exposing the port, and this is for the workers, that is the salary task, uh, should be there here, you can see, you can choose over various um, uh, modes like burst mode, this mode, that mode, whatever you want, um, so that's that, now one thing I want to show you is in action, so that's my RabbitMQ, so if I go to the queues, um, right now I have one message here, uh, now let me put a message here, so actually I'm gonna split my screen, take this over here, come here. So now see, see the um, how async works. So I'm gonna make a request here. Request one, two, three. So I made three requests and the data would be there in the queues. So I'm gonna refresh that. Uh, so here you can see, so here you can see total there are like four messages here. Uh, out of which three are ready, one is still processing. So you see how everything is working. So I can go to the queue now. Uh, you can see how much data is coming every second, every minute, the throughput, you can check all of that. So another thing you could do is get messages. You can uh, poll the messages. So I'm polling right now like one messages. So if you see, that's my message, success. The result is three, one plus two is three. One plus, yeah, <laughs> oh God. So that's that, you can use the UI. Uh, one interesting thing here is to basically if you see, I have the task ID, right? So once the data is ready in the queue, uh, you, you take this task ID, we have another API endpoint uh, where you can see, if you can see success, if you see success, you can um, go over another endpoint and grab the data. Uh, one imp so you can see this, that, that's that. Another thing to note is very important thing I wanna show you. Uh, so here you can see it, X expires, that's the milliseconds. If you convert that into uh, minutes, that's gonna be like uh, 24, it's basically 24 hours. So it's gonna auto delete uh, the messages in the queue after 24 hours. So amazing architecture, messaging queues, everything we have. Um, so uh, that, that that's that. So of course, if you want, you can um, change the configuration if you want. Uh, acknowledgement mode, if you want something, you can change that. Uh, another thing you wanna do, is let's say sometimes, you know, your queue is totally jammed and you wanna flush out your queue. So what you could do is you could, so for example, let me show you. So if you see, uh, I'm still able to hit that, right? I'm still able to get the data because it's there on the queue. But if I purge the queue, purge means, are you sure you wanna, cannot be recovered? So I'm gonna purge my queue. And now if I go that, no data, because there is no data, we just flushed the queue, right? So the queue was flushed and you can see uh, um, here, so we come to overview, um, it also shows you nice like insight, how many messages are being published every seconds, every minutes, all the insights um, here. So we come to the queue, uh, I think un, un, un acknowledgement. there are four messages, total four messages. So yeah, you can pretty much, um, you know, uh, use the GUI or the dashboard here. So. So yeah, of course we don't have that because we purged the queue, right? So that's that, you can um, access the dashboard as well. So that's a small tutorial on getting started with RabbitMQ, Flask, Celery, everything is working fine in a Docker, Docker file. So yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Um, if you have any more questions, kindly list your questions in the comment section below and I would be very happy to assist you. Uh, as usual, uh, guys, if you know, the code is always there on my GitHub account. All you gotta do, come to my GitHub account, go, go to my profile, go to my repository. Um, I would try to leave the links as well, but um, Python, Redis, Flask, Celery. So that's the part one. I'm gonna leave the RabbitMQ part is in the part two. So that's pretty much it, right? Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep learning. See you guys next video, guys.